In this lecture, we're going to focus on the OneNote screen. That includes the main tabs and ribbons, the contextual tabs, and then also the key tips. Let's begin by reviewing the many components that make up the OneNote screen. I'm going to start at the top left and work my way all the way down to the bottom right of the screen, going over all the features and functions that are available. So let's start at the very top. We've got our Quick Access Toolbar. Just like any other Office program, you have access to a Quick Access Toolbar where you can add functions and features that you use on a regular basis. And we'll go over this in detail in a later module. Below the Quick Access Toolbar, we have our tabs and ribbons. Commands are organized under the various tabs called ribbons, so instead of organizing the options from drop-down menus, they're organized horizontally on ribbons, making it easier to access and view the information. If we move over to the right, we've got our title bar, and this gives us the name of the page we're on. We're currently on the screen overview page, and so that's the page it's showing us at the top. If we move further over to the right, we have our ribbon display options. We click on it, it's going to give us the three options that are available to us. The first is the auto hide ribbon, where it will hide the ribbon. And so all you see are the three buttons at the top. If we come over to the right and click, we can bring it back, or we can click over here to bring it down. Our second option is to show tabs. This will show us the tabs that are available, but not the ribbons. So it gives us a little bit more screen, but it also reminds us of what tabs we have available for us. Then if we wanted to go to the ribbon, we would click on a tab and it would bring it down. Come back over. Our last option shows us the tabs and the ribbons. If we come over to the right even further, we've got our minimize, our maximize or restore down, and our close buttons. Let's go below that a little bit and we've got a little arrow here. This allows us to collapse our ribbon if we want to see a little bit more space. Bring it back up. Now if we look at our ribbon, we've got what are called groups. That's where they take the information or the commands that are available within a ribbon and put them into groups of like commands. For instance, on our home tab, we've got a basic text group. And within here, we have all the commands for our basic text, such as bolding, italicizing, underlining, setting our font, and so forth. Now let's come over to the left, and our column over here is called Notebooks. And this is going to list each of the notebooks that we've set up. Within our middle column, we have our section set up, and then we have our pages. If we come all the way over to the right, we can navigate between the various pages and the middle column will show us the information that's available within that page or that note. Above our pages, we have our search box, and this is where we could search for information within our page, an entire notebook, and so forth. Now let's go up and focus on the tabs and ribbons themselves. If we click on the File tab, it's going to take us to the Backstage. It's the only tab that does not give you a ribbon. Instead, like I said, it takes you to Backstage and gives you the commands that are available there. The reason for this is that the file commands have to do with the whole notebook instead of individual pieces. So what you're doing is you're opening a notebook, you're printing, you're exporting information, you're sending it, you're setting up your account, you're setting your options and so forth. Whereas when you're in the tabs and ribbons, you're doing things individually within that notebook. Clicking the arrow will take us back. The Home tab is our default tab. Whenever you open up OneNote, this is the tab you're going to be accessing immediately. And from here, we've got our various groups. Our clipboard, where we can do our cutting and our pasting and use our format painter. Then we've got the basic text group, which we already discussed. We can set our styles within our notes, and we can tag our notes, send emails, and set up meeting details. If we click over one, we have our Insert tab. From the Insert ribbon, we can insert spaces, tables, files, images, media, set up our links. We can do recordings of audio and video, and we can do timestamping and so forth. Our Draw tab and ribbon gives us the tools to draw within our notebook. We can also do handwritten notes, we can draw shapes, and we can do ink to math. Our History tab and ribbon is going to show us information about our notes. If we're sharing our notes, we can see um, information about recent edits. We can go through and look for unread information. Go back and look at information that we have recycled or deleted if we needed to pull it back as well. Our Review tab 
gives us the options, just like in Word, for reviewing things, doing our spell check, our research, the source, setting our language, and also within here we can do linked notes. And our final tab is our View tab. And this is where, just like in Word or Excel, we can set our view. From here we have our normal view, our full page view, our dock to desktop view. We can also do some page setup by changing the color of our pages, adding rules to our paper, hiding our title page, and setting the paper size. We can zoom in and out from here, and we can also open up multiple windows if we wanted to work on multiple places at one time. And from within our notes, we have what's called the mini toolbar. From here we can do formatting, we can set up our flags, to-do list, uh, format paint, and delete information, instead of having to go up to the tabs or ribbons to do it. In contrast to your core tabs, which contain various common commands that are relevant regardless of your workspace content, contextual tabs typically contain one or more commands that are relevant to a selected or highlighted object only. So for instance, let's go ahead and add a table. So we'll go to our Insert tab, Table. Once we add the table, you'll notice we get our Table Tools and the Layout Contextual tab. This tab only appears when you've inserted or are working on a table and your cursor is within the table. It'll give you all the commands available to do anything with your table um, as far as selecting the columns, rows, hiding borders, setting up shading, aligning your information, and inserting uh, columns to the left or right and so forth. You'll notice once I click outside the table, the contextual tab goes away. Another contextual tab that we have available is our Recording Contextual tab. So if we go to the Insert and click Record Audio, you'll notice I get the Audio and Video Tools and the Recording Contextual tab, and you'll see that it's recording. This contextual tab will appear when we're doing audio or video recordings and gives us the ability to do our pause, our stop, rewind our information, set our audio and video options. Now if I were to delete the recording, the contextual tab goes away. Another contextual tab we have is for our equations. So let's go back to insert and let's go ahead and insert an equation. Once I insert the equation or are working within the equation area, I get the equation tools and our design contextual tab. And this gives me the tools to ink my equation, add symbols, set up my structure and so forth. And again, these are contextual tabs, and that means they only become available when you're working with the specific object that brings them up. The Tables Contextual tab, for instance, comes up only when you're working within a table. The Recording Contextual tab only comes up when you're working with recordings, just as the Design Contextual tab only comes up when you're working within your equation. Let's go ahead and move on to the key tips, or the access keys. The access keys are shortcut keys that give you access to the ribbon commands without having to use your mouse. So if you're someone who prefers to use the keyboard instead of your mouse to access commands, the access keys or the key tips are great for you. To activate, all you need to do is press the Alt key. Once you do that, you'll notice that the Quick Access Toolbar gets key tips along with the tabs. The Quick Access Toolbar will always have numbers for its access keys and the tabs will always have letters. Once activated, all you need to do is press the letter for the tab you want to access. So if I want to go into Review, I would press R. Once I do that, it's going to take me in and give me the key tips that are available for commands within that tab. So if I wanted to go to Research, I would hit R again, and it's going to bring up the Research sidebar for me. Press the Alt key again, brings up the key tips for the tabs, if I want to go to Insert, I press N. I'll get the key tips that are available for the commands within the Insert tab. If I want to insert picture, I press P, and it'll take me out so I can pick a picture to insert. Again, Alt activates. If you don't want to use the key tips, Alt again will deactivate, or pressing the Escape key will back you out of where you are. So the key tips are an excellent feature for those people who prefer to use the keyboard over the mouse. 